Hey, Christchurch kids and parents. So, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go to christmethodist.org slash children, scroll down, and there is a Sunday school sign-up form. Fill that out so that we can know that you want to participate in Sunday school this year. Um, September 13th is our initial start date, and we're going to be mailing out these Storymaker zines to every kid that wants them, and we're going to be putting out uh, videos and other fun things every week so that uh, we can just continue to learn and, and gain nourishment in the Lord even when we're distant. And, and you know what? We're going to transition back into the classroom with Storymakers as soon as it's safe to do so. But in order to do any of this, we need you to sign up first. Um, so thank you so much for all that you've done today. And with that, let's start worship. All right, Christchurch kids, so our song for today is one that I think you've probably heard before. This is Amazing Grace. Um, it's a beautiful song, and the lyrics will be on the screen, so I would hope that you could sing along with me if you know it, and if you just know the tune, then hum along. All right, let's sing together. Amazing Grace, how job Christ Church kids. All right, let's slide into Bible time. Woo. Ah, it is a beautiful day out here. Oh man. Oh, you want to read some Bible stories on the beach? <laughs> let's do it. How about Jesus feeds 5,000? It was a beautiful sunny day as Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee in a boat with white sails. Jesus had been healing sick people and many more people of all ages came to see him again that day. Maybe they could hear more of Jesus' stories or see him show God's power through another miracle. When Jesus saw the large crowd of men, women, and children, he asked his friend Philip, How are we going to get enough food to feed all of these people? Philip answered, 
I could work for six months and not earn enough money to buy food for all of these men, women, and children. The disciples didn't know what to do. Just then, Andrew pointed to a young child and said, Here is a boy who has five small loaves of bread and two fish. It is something, but it certainly is enough food for all of these people. The boy looked very nervous as he said in a small voice, Jesus, please take my food if you think it will help. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and two fish that the boy offered and asked his friends to have the crowd sit down. About 5,000 people sat in the grassy meadow by the lake that day. After Jesus gave thanks to God, he blessed the five loaves of bread and two fish. Then he shared the food with all of the people who were there that day. All 5,000 people ate until they were full. Then Jesus said, now let's gather up all of the leftovers. And you know what? There were enough leftover pieces of bread to fill 12 large baskets. More loaves and fishes left over than the boy had given to Jesus. The disciples shook their heads in disbelief as they struggled to pick up the baskets heavy with food. The people saw the full baskets of leftovers and began to understand that something extraordinary had just happened. Another miracle. Jesus smiled as he heard people say, God must have sent Jesus to us. It was a day the boy, the disciples, and all of the people would never forget. We saved you a seat. Thanks, Otto. Hi, everyone. Hello, Adelita. Hi, Mom. I mean, hi, Ada. Oh, no. What's wrong? I forgot my lunch. I forgot my lunch! Well, this is a tale that needs to be told about a young girl just eight years old, the brightest little lady of the bunch. But this one's more a tale of woe, the type to make your heart turn cold. Today's the day that Ada forgot her lunch. She assembled it with most loving care, with a turkey sandwich and a big old pear. She threw in a bag of pretzels for the crunch. To drink a thermos of apple juice for dessert, a jar of chocolate mousse. Today's not the day you want to forget your lunch. Ada. Ada, hello. <sighs> what? You kind of went blank there for a second. Of course I went blank. I need to eat. Lunch is the most important meal of the day. If my body isn't properly nourished, I will get very... Wait, I thought breakfast was the most important. Wrong again. Everyone knows all of the important decisions are made over dinner. Brunch is the best. It's lunch! Lunch is the most important, and I forgot to bring my lunch! Now her blood sugar is getting low. She's feeling it from head to toe. Hunger pain should know how to pack a punch. The little gal is getting dizzy, her post-lunch plans thrown in a tizzy, the day that Ada forgot to bring her lunch. Hey, we forgot to bring our lunch! Are you serious? Sure am! How's a person forget something like that? Don't know, just happened! Well, boys, let's bring this home and go rustle up some grub. Ada doesn't have much time remaining, the food in her stomach ain't sustaining, and now it's getting harder to come up with rhymes. Because you've got a headache that's really big and you need another word that rhymes with lunch. Must continue providing the internal monologue for little girl, but so hungry. Oh. Ada. Uh -huh. You went blank again. I keep hearing such strange melodies. Adeline, while well, you were mumbling to yourself, your closest friends provided you with a nutritionally balanced lunch. Everybody pitched in. The pencil is from me. Oh, thanks, everyone. I'm really lucky to have friends like you. You sure are, Ada. You sure are.
Yo, what did Ada forget at home? Her lunch. Oh no. That happens to me like once a week. I really feel the pain there. Have you ever forgotten something important? Wow. How did Ada's friends help her? That's right, they gave from their own lunches in order to help her. And I wonder how Ada felt knowing that her friends cared about her enough to share their lunches with her. How would you feel? Pretty good, right? In our Bible story today, what was the problem that the disciples needed to solve? Do you remember? That's right, how are they going to feed this entire crowd? How did they end up feeding the crowd? Yeah, it was a miracle! And how do you think that the boy who shared his lunch felt, knowing that because he shared his meal, so many people got to eat? And at the end of all of this, they picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. What do you think happened to all those leftovers? I wonder. So our story today tells us that all the 5,000 people who ate that day would never forget that Jesus fed them and cared about them. How can you be sure to always remember that God cares for you and provides for you even when you don't have what you need, even when you forget your lunch? I love that idea. I think one way that we can remember that God always provides for us is through the power of music. So I want to sing a song that comes straight from the Bible. This is Isaiah 55 verse 1. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come buy food and eat. Without money, at no cost, buy wine and milk. How can we buy things if we don't have money? I guess the only way is if they're free, right? If God is giving us these things for free. All right, so let's sing this song together. All oh, you who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come by food and eat. Without money, at no cost, buy a wine and milk. You who are thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money, come by food and eat. Without money, and at no cost, buy a wine and milk. All right, Christchurch kids, we're going to take next week off because we're preparing for our September 13th Sunday School launch. So be sure that you're signed up, double check, triple check if you have to, um, so that we can start our year together. All right. God bless and keep you, shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. See you next week, Christchurch kids. Mm -hmm.